Godot is just surging in popularity at the moment and it seems to me to be seeping more and more into the mainstream. What this means is that more and more people are using Godot, particularly for game jams, and more people are sharing how to do things in the engine, which is good news for the entire community. So let's take a look at what's out there this week. Game, game Dev, Dev Journey. Journey. Vampire Survivors took the gaming world by storm with its simple yet addictive gameplay. If you have ever wanted to make your very own Vampire Survivors clone in Godot 4, then Brano has the tutorial series for you. Brano will provide you with the base project and will walk you through recreating this epic game using Godot 4. This seems like the perfect series to code along to as your entry to Godot 4, so don't wait any longer. Head over there now and subscribe to stay up to date. If you've taken the stable approach and you've already started learning Godot 3.5, then there's an excellent tutorial out explaining the basic default spatial material in 3.5. Spatial material is a default 3D material that aims to provide most of the features artists look for in a material, without the need for writing shader code. However, it can be converted to shader code if additional functionality is needed. If that sounds complicated, then Watt Interactive plays with the default Godot 3.5 spatial material settings and tries to explain how they work and what they do in a user-friendly way. Go and give it a try. LDTK is an amazing tool for level design, but it's not that easy to just pick it up and use it straight out of the box. And to integrate it with Godot is perhaps a bridge too far for some. Slick Games has come to the rescue with his excellent tutorial video, which does a great job of explaining how to create a basic level in LDTK and load that level into Godot 3.5 using an add-on. This tutorial covers the creation and setup of the level in LDTK, how to define a tile set, layers and rules for the tiles. In Godot, it covers setting up a new project, how to enable the add-on, and how it works and even how to create a very basic player to run around the level. If you want to create your first platform game in Godot, then Ekeftak has a great video out for you. He'll teach you how to move the player character in a basic platformer. The tutorial is aimed at those who know a bit of programming and who can follow along and learn how to create a basic platformer using the Godot engine. The tutorial covers everything from character movement to physics, and by the end you will have made your own player character for your platformer. Ekaftek is making some great tutorials for Godot, so be sure to show your support with your subscription. If you want to use an open source alternative for tile maps in Godot, then you might consider Tilepipe. Echo of Door Worlds has an incredibly detailed and thorough explanation of how to use it with Godot 3.5. Essentially, you will be shown how to use Tilepipe to easily and quickly create a full 256 piece auto tile resource to allow you to make diagonally connecting paths in your tile maps. It's a really good video, which is even recommended by the creators of Tilepipe. So you know that it's gonna be well worth your time. We're jumping back into Ditsy Ninja's Godojo to learn all about how to use global shader uniforms in Godot 4. A uniform is a global shader variable declared with the uniform storage qualifier. These act as parameters that the user of a shader program can pass to that program. Global uniforms are immensely useful in games because they allow you to change the behavior of a lot of shaders all at the same time. They're a bit of an advanced technique, but there are some types of effects and game genres you just cannot do without them. Come and learn along with Ditsy Ninja if you want to get to grips with global uniform shaders in Godot 4. Finally, Grey Dwarf has a quick 10 minute demo out showing you how to set up global signals, which will allow you to easily trigger events across all scenes in your game. In this little demo, we tell units to do something and then they tell us when they're done. Grey Dwarf has some great Godot content on his channel, so be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date. That's all for this week. Thanks for joining me and I hope to see you all again next time.